Awesome. Hi, everybody. Welcome to Thursday, May 14th edition of the COVID-19 Hammond Task Force. This uh, task force has been meeting since the beginning of the epidemic on a weekly basis, a twice weekly basis. And I want to thank everybody for their involvement. There's people on the screen that have not missed a single meeting. And I appreciate that. And we get the word out and, you know, we get the word out from medical experts and we let everybody know what's going on in our city. And I take questions over the internet. So while the doctors are talking, Dr. Frank and then uh, Nurse Karen is going to speak. And then we're going to have some city officials speak. But I also do my best to keep up with the Facebook comments. So if you have a question that hasn't been asked before, I'll try to mine them from all the comments that we get on this. And uh, I'll do my best to ask those questions while we're doing this telecast. They usually last at least a half hour in that area. Uh, I also want to remind everybody that we have Brittany uh, that's translating for us. Uh, she's trying to keep up with her interpretation. So I'm asking everybody to keep Brittany in mind so that she can adequately and accurately translate what we're talking about for the members of our community that have trouble hearing. So without further ado, I'd like to thank Dr. Frank Masana of Comprehensive Care uh, and have him give us our bi-weekly report. How are you doing, Dr. Frank? I'm doing well this morning. How are you, sir? Great, Mayor, uh, great, Frank. Um, so, uh, you know, I, I'm going to keep it a little short today because I think um, we're moving in a, a good direction. Um, the country's starting to open up in different areas at different rates. Um, some of the earlier states that uh, started opening up are showing actually declines in hospitalizations, um, which is a good sign. I don't know if that trend will hold, but so far it's encouraging. So as we enter into the new new phase of uh, in our state here in Indiana and uh, in the city, I think it's encouraging that we should do well as long as we remember to maintain being safe. You know, continue to wear your mask when you're out in public if you can't be social distance. Certainly, if you're going to the store and you're going to be around, uh, you know, more people. I think it's still the right thing to do. We're not out of the woods, but it is looking more positive, certainly than it did a month ago. Um, the social distancing still needs to be maintained. I think that, um, you know, nobody really knew what that word meant a couple months ago. Uh, and I think everybody's well aware of it now. That really is one of the best tools that we have to minimize the spread of this uh, disease. Uh, if the virus can't get to you, you can't become infected. So uh, I think if we can maintain um, those safe practices and businesses, I think businesses will adapt. They will uh, enact uh, as best as they can social distancing and policies that keep their employees as well as their patrons safe. Um, I'm, I'm optimistic and, and time will tell. So it'll be an interesting period in the next few weeks to see where, where this all goes. Have you noticed any difference in your uh, practice? Are there more people coming through or? Yeah, this week we've definitely picked up. Uh, we've had more people coming through this week for sure. Uh, and and I've guys... noticed from some of the companies that we, uh, we we take care of in different parts of the country, they're starting to hire more. Um, their activity seems to be increasing. It obviously depends on the region, uh, but we've definitely noticed some, some increases. Okay. Um, all right, Dr. Frank, uh, if you don't mind hanging on, just in case I get questions we can't answer, uh, I'll come back to you, but I'll go next over to Karen Callahan, who's the ER, uh, Chief Nurse of the Emergency Room. I always butcher your title, I apologize, Karen. And she's, uh, she's been on every meeting with us as well. She gives us the report from Franciscan Health in Hammond. How you doing, Karen? Karen, she's having a problem with audio. Uh-oh. So she may not be able to hear it all, yeah, but she's working on it. Okay, we'll come back to you, Karen. Wow, I got pressure on me now. Uh, okay, we'll go next. Okay, so Karen's going to try to come back in. She's been giving us regular updates from Franciscan Healthcare Center Hammond. Uh, we usually take reports from public safety, so I'm going to go next over my assistant chief of police, Andy Short, to give us an update from the Hammond Police Department. Andy? Good morning. Uh, we are on stock up at least for several months in regards to the uh, PPE. We all have uh, one civilian. You said several months of PPE, huh? We're doing well. Huh? Yeah, we do well. Good. At least two to three months. Good. That's great news. And we get a lot of donations. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
People can still donate too, right, Chief? Yes, yes they can. That's so right. if they want to donate, they would donate. Right now, we've been coordinating through the Central Firehouse still? Um, we can. There hasn't been many. Uh, a lot of the supplies that we've been getting, obviously, through trade ones out in East Chicago and some other places. We got a small little batch of masks from uh, Lake County EMA just a few days ago. Nice. But it can come through us and or obviously uh, they can drop it off at the police department as well. Or if somebody wants to donate PPE, they can contact the mayor's office in the city, sure. 853-6302, and we will arrange for the drop off. That's great. Okay. And then uh, last time we checked, we had no uh, COVID-19 positive Hammond police officers. Is that still the case? Well, we have one officer who's uh, uh, got tested on Tuesday. We're waiting for his results. Hopefully sometime. Is he in quarantine right now? Or is yes, he... he's in quarantine right now. So he was showing symptoms, obviously. Yes, yes. yes. Okay. And also we have a civilian um, who's a uh, did test positive. We found that out yesterday and she is quarantined. Wow. Was she? Part-time. Really? Yes. Oh, man. But I believe inside our home, I think there were several other people there. I gotcha. So she brought it to the police department. So. <laughs> Okay. Yes. So that's it though. Yes. That's good news. That is good news. And then I, I know obviously, you know, what's uh, what's your biggest complaint, your officer's biggest complaint about quarantining and sheltering in place? What's their biggest problems? Well, so far some of the biggest crime we got is just because of the domestic. The domestic uh, issues yes, in house. Yes, right. Yes, so those right. calls have gone up a lot. Yes, those calls have, yeah. And then we also get the of course the calls at the playground and everything like that. We're turning into the essential police, or yeah, you know, yeah. right? Uh, that's true. So you know, I, I last night I drove by Hesville Park and saw I don't know twenty kids in the play in the park last night, and I stopped my car and I thought about it for a few minutes and I just drove home. I'll be honest with you. I mean, it's tough to do that, and you know the kids are going crazy, and you know it's a beautiful night, and they wanted to ride their skateboard and. It looked like they were trying to maintain social distancing, but I can only imagine how tough of a decision that is for a Hammond police officer. To, we want our kids to do stuff to keep out of trouble, and they're keeping out of trouble, and we're saying, hey, you can't do that. I get a lot of calls, and what I've been doing is just instead of sending our frontline guys out there, I've been calling our own supervisors. And we usually have about three on the streets and have them go over there and take care of the force. But we don't issue tickets or anything, no, really, right? No. It would have to be an extreme situation. It would have to be extreme. Because, I mean, yeah, we're all neighbors. They're pretty nice. Once we go over there, we have gone the siren a couple of times. They usually take off. Okay. All right. Uh, you know what? Before I go over to have a, uh, before I go over to have a fire department, I see Karen's got the, the sound problems figured out. We'll go to Karen Callahan over at the emergency room at Franciscan Healthcare. How you doing, Karen? You can't hear us from here, but we okay. can hear her. We can hear you. Go ahead and give us your report. Hey, I can't hear you, but I'll just give you my okay. Um, the hospital has 22 positives with nine rule outs. We've been status quo. We did see a small uptake of patients um, coming into the ER since the opening on Sunday for Lake County. Um, still the same um, people wear your PPE, you know, um, wash your hands, all that stuff. Um, this is a little awkward because I don't have a response from you guys, but we are status quo at the hospital. So. Thank you. Okay. Thanks. I need to learn sign language. Maybe I can get. Um... <laughs> Thank you, Karen. All right. So there we go. That's a different type of report. Uh, I got a question off the internet. Would love to play tennis at Indy Illy or Harrison Park, but still taped off. Ended up playing in Munster. I hate hearing that. Our job is to keep you in Hammond, even if it's for tennis. Uh, Kevin Smith. Where are you? Hi. Hi, Mayor. Good morning. Good to see you. Did Good you hear that you. last question? I did. Um, that's actually kind of curious because Munster should not be open either. Um, all, it's specifically in the governor's order that uh, tennis courts, basketball courts, playgrounds are May 24th. So I'm shocked that um, uh, Munster's courts are open. And if they are, I'm assuming the Munster Parks and Rec guys are listening to this and um, we'll take uh, I'm sure they're taking care of that because it's not supposed to be open. Um, and I know ours aren't, and that's the governor's order. So it's about, it's about the best I can tell you. So oh, sorry, Hammond resident. We're going to make it impossible to play in Munster as well. That's the <laughs> answer, this gentleman. Yeah. <laughs> no. Well, I'm just commenting that I know ours are closed, and that's what's supposed to happen. It's one of those, though, you sort of have to scratch your head at because, I mean, I guess if you're playing doubles, you could violate social distancing. But if you're playing two people playing tennis, 
it seems to be a, a type of sport that you would have distancing, maybe the net they're worried about. I don't know, but yeah, it, it would seem that tennis is a little different than basketball um, just because you have a lot less social con or contact, physical contact, and there is a natural social distancing even during singles and doubles. So like if we had a, a policy that you cannot charge the net, we might be able to get around. <laughs> I guess. No, no licking the net. Okay. All right. Thanks, Kev. So yeah. that's one of those you have to scratch your head at. I agree. It's legal to play golf, but you can't play tennis. <laughs> so we're not making up the rules here. We're just trying to enforce the rules that are given to us. So. Country club is only half open. <laughs> yeah, right. So thanks, Kev. Appreciate yes, you're it. Welcome. Uh, while we're talking about this, and before I go to the fire department, I want to remind people we're in stage two. We'll quickly go through the stage two rules that we're following. City Hall is open by appointment only. Uh, we've been open since the beginning of the week. Most people you see in City Hall have masks on, and we do have masks available for the public to come in, and it's recommended you wear them. Um, we are monitoring temperatures. We are monitoring the total number of people in the building. It's not recommended if you're 65 or over that you're outside at all. Uh, and we maintain social distancing, but city hall is open. So if you need to do business, we are open for business. The gathering limits increased in stage two from 10 to 25. Uh, essential, travel, no, essential travel restrictions have been lifted. So it, you could travel for non-essential reasons like going to the skateboard park, legally. Religious services are allowed in phase two. In fact, uh, Rick reported, uh, Rick Sparks from Hammond First Baptist Church reported in our last meeting that they maintained social distancing and they had a smaller than normal crowd, but they actually held services at First Baptist Church this weekend and on Wednesday. Rick, is that true? Thank you, sir. Gotcha. And uh, retailers that were previously curbside only can now operate at 50% capacity. That's stage two, and we're in that right now. That's things like liquor stores, clothing stores, furniture stores, jewelry stores. Rest okay, next week, excuse me, Monday, May 18th, which is only a few days away. Restaurants, barber shops, beauty salons, tattoo parlors, all open at 50% capacity on Monday. That's May 18th in Lake County. In Porter County, LaPorte County, they're all still open. They opened actually earlier this week. So what is still closed? Bars and nightclubs, gyms and community centers, playgrounds, basketball courts, water parks, and tennis courts still closed. Under, under law, like we're not making the rules here, sports venues like the Sports Plex, the Shepherd Center, casinos, still closed, movie theaters, still closed, schools and universities, still closed. That's my report. We're going to go off to the Hammond Fire Department and hear how we're doing with the Hammond Firefighters. And I got Deputy Fire Chief Kevin Margrave here. How are you doing? Good morning, Mayor. Good, uh, good morning, everybody. Uh, fire Department again. Pleased to report we're doing well. We did have two positive transports this week uh, on Tuesday, which brings the total um, of transports positive that we've taken care of is 26. Uh, the one individual I spoke of Monday that was awaiting his test results was negative. He'll be coming back to work tomorrow due to the 72 hour, no symptoms, uh, quarantine. Uh, PPE, we're good. PPE is, uh, We've we've got a sufficient amount of PPE to, to carry us through, and again, sounds like PD's got extra if you need it. So. Our message our message to our people and to everybody else is we just need to stay vigilant. We still uh, obviously are transporting people that have difficulty breathing, as well as uh, as dispatch sends it across. The sick person could be fifty different things, so we know it's still out there. Yeah. Uh, people, don't drop your guard. You know, protect yourself. A personal responsibility to me is going to be a big thing going forward for everybody. And that's that's our biggest sell to our people right now. Our guys are doing a great job and we continually let them know to stay vigilant and use their PPE at all times. 
Thank you, Chief. Uh, and to emphasize a point you just made, in the city of Hammond right now, we have 421 positive cases of COVID-19 just in the city of Hammond. In Lake County, the number is much higher than that. And statewide, it's 25,000 Hoosiers that are positive for COVID-19 right now. In the city of Hammond, while we're talking about stats, we increased from Monday to Wednesday. We don't even have today's stats yet. We increased 20 cases in the city of Hammond in that period of time. And unfortunately, we had one fatality between Monday and Wednesday. Uh, so we have a total of 14 fatalities in the city of Hammond for COVID-19. So that goes to emphasize what Chief Margraf was just Margraf was just saying is it's out there. Just because you can go to the beauty salon next week, just because you can go to the restaurants next week, doesn't mean it's wise to do so. I hate to say that. It doesn't mean that you could go out there and shake hands with your buddy or go out there without your mask on. There's people out there that are sick. And most likely, and this is something, hey, Dr. Frank, could you un unmute? Oh, you are unmuted. You know, Dr. Frank, I'm mentally prepared for a second wave or even a third wave. I, I was listening to a podcast last week that predicted us going into and coming out of quarantine repeatedly until there's a vaccine created. Do you, do you believe that philosophy? Do you think there's going to be a second wave and possibly a third wave? Um, no, but I need to clarify that. Um, I think there will be hot spots that do pop up across the country, but I do not believe there will be a large scale second wave um, you know, across the country. I think we've gotten the ability to test now. When this first started, we couldn't test anybody for a while. So with the ability to test, with the ability to do the contact tracing, to do the monitoring, I think we can squelch some of the hot spots before they require large scale quarantines. Um, so I absolutely do agree that there will, we're not out of the woods, there will be um, flare ups, if you wanna say that, um, and we still need to be vigilant. Um, but I, like I said at the beginning, I'm very encouraged that some of the states that have loosened up their restrictions, including restaurants, barbershops, things like that, so far, so far, are looking like they're doing well. And, I, and that is, it may be attributable to people just having the common sense to take it serious. Um, some of those states are southern states. It's warmer. Maybe there is something to the warm weather, you know, contributing to it. I don't know that we know that. Um, so you I, think, I do. Doctor, do if you were at a restaurant... Nervous. If you were at a restaurant eating outside, because that's one thing you could do in Arizona that you really can't do during a lot of times of the year here. Do you think eating yeah. outside, you're safer? I mean, if you had a choice between outdoor and indoor seating, you're way better off outdoor, right? Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. As long as you're not packed close together, if you're, you know, the tables are separated, absolutely. It's much, much less likely that you'll catch something if you're outdoors, especially if there's even a mild breeze going, you know? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, could you, uh, Mylon, could you unmute real quick? I have a question for the Hammond Marina I thought was interesting. Where are you, Mylon? This is how I test if people are listening or not. Mylon's not really watching, is he? There we go. Hey, Mylon. Hi, Mayor. Uh, I, was, I was doubting you for a second. No, don't doubt. Okay. <laughs> hey, Mylon, we had a question for the Hammond Marina. It says, why is the Hammond Marina not allowing jet skis or jet boats right now and, and other people have their boats in the water? Sure, uh, well, we're, we are being very cautious as we move through the opening of the boating season. As you know, uh, early on, uh, we were informed that we were transportation, not recreation. And we're trying to make sure we go through the, the gas and the, the playing basically out in the lake in a, in a cautious manner. So we just want to be safe. Uh, we think probably sometime around June 1st or so that should uh, be able to open up and we should be able to uh, then be able to let the folks in with their jet skis and jet boats. So long as we have room for them. Uh, real quickly, the, the best thing that has happened so far to the marina is we have uh, right around 150 reservations for boats that we didn't have at the beginning of the year because the marinas are closed in the city of Chicago. So if we have room for their jet boats and their jet skis, as right around June 1st, we'll start inviting folks back. Uh, we'll, we'll see how that goes. Okay. Thank you, Mylon. So Mylon, how many boats have their boat in the water right now? Uh, we probably have uh, probably 350 right now. Nice. 
again, as I said, we have a lot of reservations from the folks that are getting launched uh, and don't have a home in Chicago. So uh, we're, we're happy to accommodate those voters as well. All right. Thank you, Mylon. Appreciate Thank it. You. You're welcome, Mayor. Mark Hines, this is your test. You, look at that. How are you, Mayor? Nice. Nice to see you, Mark. You're even in your office. Either that or you somehow figured out how to put your office behind you. <laughs> nope, I'm in my office. <laughs> I, I, I can pan around and show you. <laughs> all right, all right. I trust you. I trust you. Okay, Mark, I, I mentioned earlier, and I'm going to probably have uh, Andy, Andy Short jump in on this one also. I had uh, a caller that says, Columbia Park was full yesterday. I saw adults taking the tape down. I mentioned earlier, I went by the, the skateboard park and there was 20 kids in there and I chose not to do nothing. Uh, I can only imagine how frustrating this is for you because you are a park guy and you love it when kids are in the parks, but right now we're telling them to go home. Um, can you emphasize that again for me? And, and then I'm gonna go over to Andy and see what he has to say about it. Sure, yeah, it, it is, it is a, a, a difficult time right now because really in the parks, one of the things that we always promote is the social aspect and the social distance is just really difficult to get that through. And I think it's, it's stressful on all of us. Uh, I know you've mentioned it before, when you're home for a day, it's like you just wanna go to work just to get out of that mode of, of that rut, if you will, that, that sometimes we're all in. Um, Columbia Park specifically yesterday, every single sign that we put up that was closed has been removed. Somebody took them all down. We're putting new ones back up today. Uh, the tape was all gone. Uh, hey, even Mark, Mark, somebody's been taking my signs down also. I wonder if it's the same person. <laughs> Different signs, sorry. Different issue. Um, the, but uh, the even our wood that's across the basketball rim was removed yesterday at Columbia Park. So uh, the, the, there's definitely some a decent amount of people out there. And, it, and it's a shame. We really don't want to go to the extent of uh, your, your neighboring mayor in Chicago, but, uh, and, and closing down the entire park. Uh, I, you know, the, the, the thought is we're trying to allow people to continue to use the things that are there that can be that individual recreation. Like Columbia Park has a wonderful walking path in it. it you know, there's loops throughout it that people can walk their dog or walk or ride a bike. Um, we just really want to stress and try to follow those guidelines from the governor that says not to use the playgrounds, the basketball courts, a lot of those things that um, people are going to touch and obviously can transfer, um, you know, the germs from uh, individuals to individuals, so. Let me ask you a question. Mm -hmm. Why is tennis shut down? <laughs> uh, it, that's a real, th there's a lot of gray areas, Mayor, in the governor's reports. I mean, why, why are we not allowing recreational leagues uh, to play games until June 14th, but yet we're, we're assuming we can allow them to practice uh, in the next phase where it allows up to 100 people to social distance in groups, uh, but it doesn't specifically say that. That's been our interpretation. The only thing for tennis courts, because it specifically says tennis courts, we are, we're abiding to follow that, that uh, rule there. And I think what you've heard and what I've heard is that the, you know, we, can, we can be more restrictive uh, based upon the governor's order, but we can't be less restrictive than the governor's order. And since he specifically says tennis courts, even though I totally agree with you, and I've even seen some in Illinois, which is even you know higher uh, uh, numbers than than we have, that are completely wide open. But uh, that that falls down into the local uh, municipality or agency that's overseeing those. I will also say I know in Munster the, the comment was made about that being in Munster. It, it, it could be the school where maybe the school district in Munster is not closing their courts off. So uh, that, that, that could be something else, but that, that talks into uh, what other uh, agencies are doing. Okay, thank you, Mark. I'm gonna go to my, chief, uh, my assistant chief of police, Andy, uh, Andy Short again. Andy, in addition to, I, you're hearing a lot of complaints and I know we talked about this already with kids going to parks still. Uh, could you please reiterate to the force that we need to do our job when it comes to situations like this. Obviously, people are concerned as well as myself. Yeah, I would put out another email, and I, and I also know that Captain Long puts out email in regards to um, having our guys patrol those areas. But uh, we also take some type of consideration that the fact that that area there, which is called Central Hammond, 345B, which is probably our most busiest beat of all. So those guys are constantly running 
uh, sometimes they'll be even lucky even get a lunch break because they're running so quick so much. But I will find out uh, if there was that many people out there at Columbia. Uh, first, I'll find out did we get a call there, and then I'll see if anybody responded. Thanks. I'll let you know later. Thanks, Chief. I'm going to go next to my chief of staff, Phil Taylor. Phil, I got a I got a tough one for you. We've been getting questions like this. What do you guys say to the businesses not waiting till the 18th to open in Lake County? There are several nail and hair salons open along with restaurants like Top Notch, it said that opened up their dining room already. What do we say to them? It's not fair when we have some businesses that are abiding by the rules and then other businesses that are flaunting it. How would you recommend uh, situations like this be resolved? Well, and it sounds like they're asking about all of Lake County, not just Hammond. Right. Um, if we have issues in Hammond, uh, we know that a business is opening when under the governor's order, it's not allowed, we are addressing it. Um, we, we have somebody go out there, talk to them, let them know that there could be some repercussions to opening early when it's not allowed. And uh, we kind of take it from there. But from a Hammond perspective, I don't know that we've had too many that haven't been responsive to us once we've uh, talked to them and let them know that they're technically not within uh, the governor's order at this time. So um, it's hard if there's businesses out there that are trying to look at different interpretations of the governor's order and they're using that to potentially open. Um, I think each individual community in town has to uh, address it uh, on their own as we are in Hammond. So I know if we, we mentioned at uh, Monday's meeting, if you see a business that is operating that shouldn't be, uh, we think ideally, if you have the 311 app, uh, that's a great way of getting that information to us. If you don't, you can call us here in the mayor's office. And if we're not open, uh, then, you know, worst case scenario, you can call 911 and, and let us know through that, that emergency number. But we prefer you go the other routes. Uh, and again, people have been very responsive, Mayor. The businesses have been responsive. We've done pretty well. Uh, I also want to let everybody know that uh, City Hall did reopen on Monday with restrictions. Um, so far, it's gone really well. We've asked everybody who's going to come here for a permit or to pay their rental registration fee or to apply to get a business license. We've asked that you make an appointment. We would prefer to do appointment only. It helps us maintain the social distancing. We're also doing temperature checks for everybody who comes into City Hall right now. Um, and each department has uh, created their own restrictions to make sure that they are protecting uh, all the employees of their department that are now back at work, uh, as well as the residents that need to come in and use their services. So, so far it's gone really well. Please continue to uh, call ahead. It really helps us. Uh, if you don't have a mask and you absolutely need to come in, uh, we can try and provide you one while you're here in the building. But again, we have uh, limited supply. So uh, if you have your own mask, we absolutely ask that you bring that with you. But so far, everything's going really well. And uh, thank you to all the residents that have been abiding by the, the new restrictions that, that are going to keep us all safe. Thank you, Phil. Appreciate the update. Um, okay, some questions off the internet. When will the YMCA open? When will gyms open? Anybody? I know when the YMCA is opening. When? The YMCA is opening on May 24th at 4.45 a.m. to be exact. Outstanding. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's that's phase three. So May 24th, when we go into phase three, YMCA will open. Uh, we'll update you on what phase, phase three means. When will the dentist be reopened? Uh, I don't know which dentist you go to, whoever asked that question, but dentists are allowed to be open a couple weeks ago, I believe. The, yeah, the governor let non-elective surgeries uh, begin a couple weeks ago. So uh, that you're, if your dentist is still shut down, you need to find a different dentist. Um, okay, open up the marina. Mylan, where are you? <laughs> I keep testing him. Uh, <laughs> I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> Michelle says, open up the marina, Mylan. What do you have to say to that? The marina's open, Mayor. Uh, it's we've, we've never really shut down. Uh, boats have been coming in since the beginning of April. So uh, I mean, I don't know what they mean by that question. If, if they're asking about the lakefront and the lakefront beach, well, we don't have much of a beach left because of all the, the lake uh, surges and the storms and uh, the high water. Uh, you know, you, you could come and walk through the bird sanctuary 
You can come and walk on all the open uh, areas of, of the marina. But the boats have been coming in since the beginning of April, very slowly and uh, very carefully and cautiously. Thank you very much, sir. Nice talking to you Welcome. again. Yep. Mark, Heinz, could you grab it real quick? I think I'm doing a pretty good job of keeping it up. There's a sign at Gibson Park stating that the facility is closed. Does that mean we cannot use the walking path? Well, in all the parks, we, we, we were encouraging people to just use the walking paths. That's the main thing that we really want to think is open in all of our parks. And we have them in a lot of them. I mean, between uh, Dowling and Hessville and the perimeter sidewalk at Edison and MLK, uh, Irving, Columbia, that there, there's paths in many of our parks, Pulaski up, up, up north in the Forsyth, Wolf Lake. The paths for, for walking, riding bikes, uh, walking your dogs, uh, th th those are the individual recreation types of state. The green space, you want to go fly a kite on a nice day, go ahead and do it. But that's, it's the individual recreational activities that we need to allow. Uh, I think Brittany's thanking, thanking goodness that you, you froze there, bud, because <laughs> she was trying to keep up with you. I felt bad for her. So, all right, Mark, we're going to go ahead and mute you and you can figure out what's going on over there. <laughs> All right, I'm going to go to the Hammond City Council President, Dave Warple, for an update from the Hammond City Council. How are you doing, Councilman Warple? Oh, I need a haircut bad. Don't want to put the scissors in my wife's hands yet, though. But uh, just proud to say that we haven't missed a beat since this shutdown. We've been having our meetings online through Zoom, which I hope, uh, from judging from what my colleagues want, those will continue at least through the next meeting. Uh, the meeting on Monday, the 25th, via Memorial Day has been moved to, to Tuesday the 26th. And basically I, I've been hearing from the residents as compliments on not the city not missing a beat, the city services being there, the police and fire being there through all this. And I do have a question that I get asked a lot from the doctor. And that is, I'm hearing from a lot of people of, about uh, testing to see if you've had this and not known it. And if that's available, and if so, is there a way to tell that if you've had it, do you build up an antibody? Because everybody's got a story, it seems like, about, I remember that time I sneezed in January or I coughed in February. And I'm just curious, because the public's asked me, is there testing available to find out if you've had it and if you have an antibody to it? Thank you, Dave. I'm going to go to Dr. Frank and see if he can help us with that. And if he can't, I'm going to go to my first responders who I know can answer that. So, Dr. Frank, did you hear uh, Councilman Werpel's question? I did. I did. Testing. Um, the answer to the question is yes, there are antibody testing, there is antibody testing available. Um, I think we touched on it a little bit on Monday. I have to tell people you have to be cautious, though. Um, some of those antibody tests are um, not accurate. Um, in particular, the uh, and there probably are some. I don't want to, you know, badmouth everything. Um, the the finger prick test, you know, just a little drop of blood. There's been a lot of concerns about accuracy from those. I've had uh, some cases where people have tested positive for antibodies using the serum test, where you draw some blood, and then they tested negative um, using the other test, uh, the finger prick test. FDA hasn't certified those. So you just kind of have to be careful where you're seeing them. I can tell you LabCorp is, uh, and Quest both are offering um, the antibody testing and insurance is covering um, that you still need a physician's prescription, I believe, to get them. They are offering the IgG test, uh, which is kind of the longer term one. It's not appropriate to do if you're sick. Um, and I don't know what the qualifications are going to be for insurances to actually cover it. Um, is, I don't know that they're just covering anybody that just wants to get it for the sake of getting it. Um, so it is available. I think it will become more widely available. They are, um, you know, there's, there's good and bad to it. Um, the, the good is, is if you do know um, if you have the antibodies, you, you will have immunity. There's no question about that. We don't know the duration of which, but it's likely to last for 
probably a couple years, at least until there's a vaccination. It may last longer than that. Um, there's no reason to think this will be any different than any of the other coronaviruses that we've come into contact over the years where immunity is imparted. So, so Dr. Frank, then, you know, not talking about COVID then, let's say I get the flu, uh, this, let's say I get the regular flu in 2019. Are you saying that usually that means I probably won't get the flu again for at least a year, maybe sometimes no. even a couple of years? No, that's different because the flu is not a stable uh, virus, meaning it mutates. So from one year to the next, the vaccine that we come up with is an educated guess as to what the mutations are based upon some of the early, you know, um, the findings that they're getting um, from, from mostly from Asia. It's where it usually starts coming about. So um, some years you hear the flu vaccine isn't, isn't very effective, and that's because we didn't get it right on the guess. Coronavirus at this point, we really have, think it's very stable, meaning it's not mutating. So if it doesn't mutate and it doesn't change its form, then a vaccine will be successful. And that's why you have to get an annual flu vaccination. But you are correct. If it was the same flu virus, you would be immune to it. Problem is it's not the same flu virus. So some people could get flu year after year is what you're saying. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. And I suspect, and you know, I can't tell you this with confidence, but I suspect if the flu, um, if you had the flu one year and the next year, the strain that's out there is very similar, you probably do have some immunity towards it. But you're saying, so COVID-19 doesn't mutate as much as the normal flu then? So far, there's no, no evidence of any significant mutations. Um, which so, is good. so basically, you're saying because it doesn't mutate, then if you get it, you probably have immunity to it for a period of time. Absolutely, I'm, I'm confident of that. Um, there's, there's absolutely, yeah. See, so, so that's the, why we have um, doctors. I, I, I want to just clarify because I want to keep it short. But the antibody testing is available. I, I think that um, if you're just wanting to know, it's probably a little too soon to start going and trying to get the antibody testing just for the sake of knowledge. I would give it a little bit more time for the, the, them to get the kinks worked out, to get it more stabilized and to get, you know, it's expensive. It's not cheap. You know, um, we, we, we are doing it for companies, but we, they're not covered by insurance and it's not cheap. So you don't want to just willy nilly do it because if you're negative, well, what do you want to go next week and get it again or the next week and get it again? You just can't afford to do that. So I think it's a good idea, but I would just urge a little bit of caution until it gets a little more farther down the line. Thank you, Dr. Frank. I'm gonna to go to uh, Susie Demopoulos from the Hammond City Clerk's Office. I know uh, you guys are doing business down there in the clerk's office. I just wanted to make sure that you had a chance to address the public. Uh, we'll unmute you. Hi, Susie. Good morning, thank you so much. The city of Hammond has done a fantastic job with PPE for City Hall. Um, all the public that has been coming in has been wonderful. And we wanna thank you again for taking such great command of this. Thank you, Susie. Um, how are you guys doing in the clerk's office? You're open right now serving the public, right? That's correct. So a lot of people coming in to pay their fees and things as like a that. Matter, yeah, as a matter of fact, there has been. We were pretty shocked, but yeah, they, we've had quite a few people come in and pay. Awesome. So anything you need to tell the public before uh, we, we go mute again? No. Um, the only other thing would be if you have any fines that were due, we are not assessing a late fee from the time that we weren't open. So you don't have to worry about that. But if you have any concerns, you can call the office. Okay, thanks Susie, it's great to see you. Welcome back. Thanks. Uh, next, I'm gonna go to Hammond's Chief of Inspections, Kelly Kearney. I know uh, this is, for people who don't know City Hall very well, inspections is definitely our busiest department as far as the public is concerned. So when we open City Hall or when we shut City Hall, it really affects the people that are building homes and the people that need inspections for electrical or plumbing. So Kelly's department, as soon as we opened, was immediately swamped. But Kelly Kearney, Kelly, you have anything you want to update the public on? Just uh, coming in for permits and uh, rental registrations. Um, if they could call ahead and make an appointment, um, we can meet them right at the door. We are the first point of contact uh, as you come in City Hall at the main entrance. Um, and that's where you're going to be getting your temperature taken also. If you have masks, wear them. All the uh, employees, uh, all the administrative assistants are wearing masks. Um, just, we do have glass up, but there is that um, contact. There's a lot of people that come through there. So there's a lot of chance for um, someone that, uh, if they were contagious, uh, to come through and, and spread that. Uh, guards are in place. Um, 
personnel is in place to take temperatures um, and treat people as quickly and efficiently as possible. You know, I have a question from audience. Do you have any idea when yard sales can begin? Uh, Anybody? Going to the board of works. If, I, if, yeah. I can, if I can jump in, yeah. uh, the Corporation Council and the Board of Public Works and Safety uh, talked about this this morning, and uh -huh. we're going to try and come up with a decision probably in conjunction with you as to what the city of Hammond would allow um, yard sales or garage sales. Okay. In regards so to right now in stage two where we are, is it not? We have not problem? issued one garage sale permit since this uh, has uh, Okay, so we need, that's right. I appreciate you pointing that out. So, hey, Kevin, are you still there? No. Oh, there you are. Did you hear the question? Yeah. I, I did. I figured you were playing like video games or something, <laughs> so I probably have to recap you. No, uh, there's something else going on uh, these days, Mayor. I'm trying to kind of keep my time, you know, busy on everything. Kevin, uh, we're at stage two, as you know, and I got a question, can we have garage sales? And Kevin uh, Margraf informs me, you guys have been talking about this and they need to get permits before any garage sale can exist. So do you agree with that as corporate counsel? Yeah, yes, Mayor, it's actually a very timely question. We've been holding um, garage and yard sale permits at the Board of Public Works. And it was an issue that came up today um, at the Board of Public Works and Safety meeting. We are going, as Kevin mentioned, we're going to try to formulate a, um, a way that we can hopefully get people to be able to get permits. Um, maybe they'll sign something agreeing that they will keep social distancing and, and things like that and up to a certain number of people at once at their, at their home. Um, but we wanna to try to obviously accommodate people that wanna do sales and we also wanna make sure that the public's safe and if they attend those. Okay, I appreciate it, Kevin. I appreciate it, Kevin. Sure. All right, uh, I think that pretty much, does anybody else have anything? Please raise your hand or whatever function Zoom allows you to do to come to our attention. Going once, going twice. I wanna thank everybody. Uh, May 19th, Thursday edition of the Coronavirus Task Force. We'll meet again on Monday. Uh, that's the 18th when phase 2.5 begins and restaurants and things of that nature open. I'll see you guys all and I thank you all for your participation. Good to see you.